Okay, hello everybody. Uh, so my name is uh, Philippe Lagadec, and uh, today will you, I will give you a presentation about uh, VBA macros and uh, the recent advances in uh, the attack and uh, defense sides. So quick disclaimer. Okay, so a few words about myself. So I work for the European Space Agency. Uh, however, the talk I'm going to give today is not uh, related to my day job. Um, for almost 20 years, uh, I have been developing open source tools for uh, file parsing and uh, malware analysis. Uh, maybe you know some of them, like uh, OLE file or OLE tools. Um, uh, and uh, in fact, um, when I started working, uh, my first project was to um, build a, an email security gateway. And uh, that's uh, when I started 20, 19 years ago uh, to um, uh, fight uh, with uh, VBA macros. Uh, and uh, since then, uh, it has been a passion for me to uh, look at five formats, uh, how you can embed active content in them, and uh, how you can um, uh, detect uh, malicious documents. So, um, yes. Uh, so today uh, I will uh, present you, uh, I mean, in 19 years uh, the tools have evolved a lot uh, and the attacker, uh, attackers also have evolved a lot, so uh, today that's why uh, I will uh, present you some um, uh, new, uh, uh, new trends in this area. Okay, so first I uh, will uh, do a quick overview of uh, VBA macros and uh, uh, try to explain why it's still an issue in uh, 2019. Uh, then I will uh, show you the analysis tools that I've developed, uh, so namely OLE VBA and Viper Monkey. Uh, then we will look at uh, two advanced techniques that uh, were uh, uh, presented um, in conferences uh, last year and this year, and, uh, that are VBA stomping and also uh, XLM macros. Um, we will also look at uh, the detection and the protection side. And uh, finally, uh, I will um, show some uh, future work. Okay, let's start with the history of macros. Um, I see three main eras in this uh, history. Uh, first, it started uh, in uh, 1995 with uh, World Basic. Uh, and from 95 to 2003, we had uh, a lot of uh, micro vir virus. Uh, maybe the, the most well-known uh, is uh, Melissa, which uh, was in 1999. Um, then, from 2004 to 2013, for 10 years, we uh, observed uh, what I call a VBA winter. Uh, in fact, uh, there was almost no uh, VBA macro uh, used for malware anymore. Attackers uh, were preferring uh, to use exploits, uh, either in Microsoft Office um, formats or in a PDF. Uh, I think the, the main reason for that is that uh, Office 2000 to 2003, um, macros were disabled by default completely, so it means the end users could not run macros, and it had uh, an effect on the, the malware market, so to say. Then, we, in 2014, we, see, we have seen a big comeback from uh, VBA macros, um, mainly used at the first stage to deliver malware. Uh, every day, um, even today, there are still hundreds of thousands of uh, phishing emails uh, sent uh, all over the world with uh, malicious macros to deliver banking trojans, uh, ransomware, APTs, etc. And uh, I think the, the main reason why we have seen this uh, return from uh, macros is uh, a big change in uh, Microsoft Office user interface. Since Office 2010, uh, there is a single enable, bu uh, enable content button that uh, uh, enables, um, allows the end user to run macros. So the user can see uh, the document and then decide if he runs the macros or not. And uh, since then, uh, macros have been used a lot uh, to deliver malware. Another reason is that uh, since Office 2010, there is a sandbox protecting uh, Office against exploits, which is called Protective View. So when you open a document uh, coming from uh, internet or from a removable device, um, it will first uh, be open in protected view and you need to click enable editing to, uh, to really open it. Okay, a uh, few examples of uh, macro-based campaigns. Uh, maybe the most prolific one is uh, Emotet. It's a banking trojan active since 2014. And um, every day it sends, uh, uh, there is a botnet sending uh, hundreds of thousands of phishing emails with macros uh, every day, even today. Um, another one is uh, FT code. It's uh, ransomware uh, written in PowerShell. 
the infection vector is also a macro. Um, other examples um, are black energy and Olympic destroyer. Uh, black energy, uh, it's related to two attacks that happened on the Ukrainian power plants in uh, 2015 and 16. And um, uh, Olympic destroyer was uh, the attack on the Winter Olympics in 2018. And um, in both cases, the, intrusion, the initial intrusion vector was a, a macro. And uh, yes, the list goes on and on and on. There are many, many other um, uh, malware campaigns since 2014 using VBA macros, and still today. So this is a typical um, uh, macro lure that uh, you get when you open a document uh, with a malicious macro, uh, trying to um, push the end user to click enable content. OK, once you click on the content, what can happen? A VBA macro can do almost everything on the system. First, it can run automatically when you open or you close the document. It can download files from the internet. It can create files locally on the system. It can execute files or commands. It can call any DLL on the system to run any function. It can directly inject shellcode into uh, Microsoft Office or into other uh, processes. It can call any active X object. It can simulate keystrokes like uh, the, end, the end user. So it can do almost anything an executable file can do. Um, and all this, it's, it's not using exploits. It's uh, using native Microsoft Office features that have been available since 1997. So it's really uh, features of Microsoft Office. Um, it is possibly possible to write uh, complete malware in a VBA, and some people have done it. But in practice, VBA macros are very simple. They are mostly used to uh, either drop a malicious file on a system or download it from the internet. OK, so if you need to only remember one thing, is when the end user clicks enable content, is exactly as if it was running an executable file. So it's. Um, extremely dangerous, yet it's not um, really understood by uh, most uh, end users. OK, why are we still talking about macros in 2019? Simply because it works. Uh, we have antivirus, anti-spam, IDS, CDR, CTI, big data, machine learning, whatever. But it's still easy to write uh, a 10 lines VB macro, send it by email, and it will cross all the defenses and hit the end users. And the only line of defense you have today is the end user with a one button or two. How does it look like um, a malicious VBA macro? So that's a very simple one, uh, which uh, calls a DLL on the system uh, um, called URL download file to file. So it will open automatically. Then it will uh, download the file from the internet save it to um, a temporary file with an exe uh, extension, and then run it. So it's extremely easy to uh, write such a macro, and you can change it. You can um, obfuscate it, and uh, then send it, and it will work. Uh, but over the years, uh, the, um, the attackers have uh, found and uh, developed a number of uh, uh, techniques for obfuscation and uh, anti-analysis. So here, uh, I just gave a list, but uh, I will not go into every detail. Uh, they can use uh, ActiveX uh, triggers. To, uh, so that's a method that works in, in PowerPoint. Um, then uh, they can hide data in the document text itself, in the spreadsheet cells, in file properties, in uh, VBA forms, in uh, document variables. Um, it can also obfuscate uh, the, the function calls. Um, we've seen also attackers using some uh, less known uh, formats like Publisher, um, MIME HTML, XML files, etc., that can also contain macros and that are less known by people and by uh, antivirus engines. Then macros can use WMI, PowerShell, uh, they can also launch VBScript, JScript. Uh, geofencing, it's uh, a technique used to, uh, when you want to target a specific country. The macro checks um, uh, if uh, the Microsoft Office is uh, an Italian version. For example, it will only run in Italy. So if your uh, sandbox system uh, runs in the US, you will not see the macro uh, behavior. 
And uh, Macro can use um, uh, API callbacks to run shell codes. So here is a, an example. Um, so here we see that it calls uh, some uh, DLL, uh, DLLs from the system. Uh, it will take the, the shell code, copy it into a buffer, uh, allocate memory in, uh, into a word, for example, and then run it. So a quick demonstration to see how simple it is. Okay, I need to move this. Okay, so this is a typical um, document with uh, the yellow bar with the enable content. So before I um, enable content, I will just show that there is a oh, wrong screen. So here you see the, the macro that I showed you before. So it will take the, the shell code and uh, copy it to a memory buffer and run it. And of course, calc.exe is on the other screen. <laughs> okay, so you see the, the shell code has, uh, has worked. And it's really a shell code because you see it crashes a word. <laughs> okay, so this is a very simple macro, and of course, uh, if you're an attacker, you can just copy and paste, change uh, all the details, and uh, it will be a completely new macro that uh, will uh, go past uh, any antivirus engine. Okay, another uh, thing that uh, is uh, not very well known is that uh, we can use uh, Microsoft Office uh, encryption. Uh, until the Office 2003, file encryption was uh, quite weak, and the VBA part was never encrypted, so it was an issue. It was not an issue for uh, for analysis tools. But since Office 2007, the file encryption covers the whole uh, file, and um, so you, you cannot look at uh, the code and analyze it without knowing the password. So usually, the, the attackers they would pull the, they would put. Um, uh, the password, uh, such as uh, 1234, in the email, and then the, the end user just has to type this password and then run the macro. Uh, there is a, a special password uh, that works with Excel. It's a Velvet Switch Shop. If you uh, encrypt uh, an Excel file with that uh, password, um, it will be completely encrypted, so hidden from uh, analysis tools. And um, when the user opens it, it will be uh, transparently decrypted. So no need to type any password. So it's a trick that has been used uh, by uh, several malware samples to hide uh, their code. Um, recently, uh, a few tools have been uh, um <coughs> released uh, for uh, decryption. And uh, I have also integrated this uh, with uh, other tools. Uh, so it's uh, now automatically used. When, whenever you analyze a file with a password, it will automatically uh, decrypt it if it knows the password. Okay, let's uh, have a look now at uh, the analysis tools. Um, the first tool we have to analyze macros is Microsoft Office itself. Uh, it's very convenient because uh, you can um, see the code in the VBA editor. You can even use its uh, debugger to run uh, through the macro step by step. Uh, the only thing is uh, you, you want to avoid uh, to uh, infect yourself, so you need to uh, go through the code and uh, identify malicious actions and replace them by something like uh, a message box. Uh, that's, that uh, method works very well if uh, your macro is very uh, obfuscated. However, um, we've seen that uh, some uh, Office installations, you need to click enable content before you see the code. So obviously, that will be an issue for that method. Um, I have not yet uh, found out um, how um, what is the distinction between the uh, Office versions that uh, allow to see the code before or not? Uh, I asked Microsoft, but uh, so far I have not uh, got any answer. Uh, another issue is that um, um, if you use the Shift key when you open a document, it will um, avoid any macro to start, but it doesn't work with every trigger. Uh, and uh, as soon as you release uh, the Shift key, um, uh, all the triggers can still work, so it's uh, a bit dangerous. Okay, so 
that's why I uh, developed um, a static analysis tool called uh, Olive VBA. Uh, it's open source, available on GitHub. So it's a, it's a command line tool to analyze uh, um, VBA macros, and it's also a Python library that uh, you can um, integrate into other applications. So over time, uh, we have uh, developed with contributors a number of uh, parsers for uh, uh, many uh, formats, like Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Publisher, etc. Um, so what it does, it, it takes the input file, it will extract the VBA macro source code and uh, decompress it. It will apply a set of um, simple obfuscations, like uh, hexadecimal, base64, uh, reverse strings, etc. Um, it also contains a mini VBA uh, language parser that tries to extract, um, to simplify some uh, strings that have been obfuscated. And then, based on the, the result, it will uh, look for specific keywords. So it will check for auto-execution triggers, so like auto-open, document open, document close, etc. It will try to identify all the suspicious keywords we know, like um, um, actions to download files, to write files, to execute shell, to call DLLs, etc. And it will also try to extract all the potential indicators of compromise that we can find, like uh, URLs, IP addresses, executable file names. Uh, recently, I had also other detections like VBA stomping and uh, Excel for macros, and I will show that to you in the second part of this presentation. Okay, quick demo. To move the screen. Okay. Uh, F here. So I showed you um, the document uh, launching a, ch a shellcode before, so we are going to analyze it. Well, it's not easy. Okay, so it shows uh, the code of uh, the, um, the macro, highlighting in uh, red and, um, and yellow the different keywords that have been found to be uh, suspicious. And then it uh, gives a list of uh, the different things that it has found. So here we see document open, so it runs when the document opens. Uh, it runs code from DLLs, and uh, it uh, uses uh, some uh, keywords to inject code into another process, etc. And we even find the name of the executable file it runs, cal.exe, because it was uh, visible in the hex string of the shell code here. So it's... Uh, quite handy. Um, since it's a Python library, it has been uh, integrated into uh, many projects. Uh, so if you use uh, online analysis services like um, Hybrid Analysis, uh, Joey Sandbox, and maybe even VirusTotal, uh, many of those services uh, actually use Ole VBA uh, behind the, the hood. Uh, it's also integrated in uh, sandboxes like uh, Cuckoo and uh, Cape. And uh, many um, analysis tools uh, now use uh, also early VBA to extract uh, the macros. Okay, but it's not always uh, enough. Sometimes uh, macros are very, very obfuscated. So if you look at this code, for example, it's extremely difficult to understand what it does. And uh, because uh, we see uh, a lot of um, gibberish names, uh, it calls a lot of uh, functions, and it's uh, very difficult to find the way. I mean, manually, it's almost impossible to do that because uh, you would have to follow hundreds of uh, function calls, and uh, the, um, the output of a VBA does not uh, say much. So for that case, in fact, I, uh, a few years ago, I started to uh, develop ViperMonkey. Um, it's, uh, in fact, uh, a custom VBA parser and uh, an emulation engine. So how it works, it takes uh, the code of uh, the macro, then it runs um, a parser with a VBA grammar to understand the, the meaning of the, the VBA code and uh, transform all the, all the code into a, a model in a Python classes. And then it will run a, a custom emulator that uh, will uh, emulate uh, the VBA library 
but also the Microsoft Office behavior. So each time the macro calls um, a function of uh, Word or Excel, we emulate it in uh, this Python uh, engine, and uh, we trace uh, the code execution. And from there, we try to uh, extract all the interesting actions. When the code tries to download uh, files from uh, the internet, to write files, to execute a shell or call DLS, we um, uh, extract it. And we also extract the potential IOCs like URLs, IP addresses, etc. So let's take the, the sample that I, I showed you before. OK. So if I run really VBA on that sample, you see uh, what I was showing you, um, a lot of uh, complex code and uh, nothing really uh, interesting uh, in the output. So let's now run ViperMonkey on the same sample. It's, um, it's very slow. Uh, you will see, uh, so now it's, it's first uh, parsing the code. So you see it's uh, finding a, a lot of uh, VBA functions. Each function is only uh, three statements, so very, very small. Uh, so now it's um, converting all, th all this uh, VBA code into a uh, um, Python uh, model. Um, so it takes, it takes a while. We have tried to um, optimize it, but it's uh, a bit difficult. So by the way, so I, I developed uh, this, um, this project uh, a few years ago. And uh, in the last two years, it's uh, mostly uh, Kirk uh, Seyri from uh, Walmart, who is uh, helping a lot, uh, contributing a lot of improvements. And it's uh, thanks to him that uh, now it's uh, getting um, to a state that it's really uh, useful. OK, it has finished parsing. And now it's uh, uh, simulating the, the code. So you see it's uh, calling all the functions and getting the results. And in the end, uh, that's uh, the, what we have found in the code. We see that, in fact, it's executing uh, a command using uh, the Microsoft script control. Um, so in fact, it's uh, an ActiveX object that can run uh, GScript, so JavaScript. And here we see the, the code of the JavaScript that is going to be execute, execute, oh, sorry, executed. And here, for example, we see that there is a URL uh, so obviously, this, um, this macro that was really obfuscated is uh, running JavaScript as a second stage to download uh, an executable file and run it on the system. So thanks to this uh, emulation engine, now we know what the code is actually doing. And we can uh, then uh, continue the analysis on this executable file. OK. So now I'm going to talk about uh, two advanced techniques that have been uh, uh, recently um, uh, reported at uh, conferences and uh, used in the wild. So first, uh, VBA stomping. So VBA macros are stored under several forms within a document. Uh, of, course, of course, we have the, the VBA source code. Uh, that's the, the plain text of the, the VBA uh, macro, uh, compressed. So it's uh, stored here in the VBA module of uh, a Microsoft Office file. But uh, we also have uh, another part, which is uh, called the P code here. It's a pre-parsed VBA uh, code. That is, it's actually byte code, ready to be executed by a Microsoft Office. And in fact, when you open a file containing macros, Microsoft Office will check uh, this P code. If it matches the same version of, uh, of Office, then it will uh, directly run the, the P code without looking at uh, the VBA source code. <coughs> the issue is that most analysis tools, including mine, uh, and also anti-malware engines, only check this part, not the P code. So in theory, if you modify the P code, uh, no, if you modify the VBA source code to look something uh, benign, uh, then the, the, the P code will not be seen and uh, will go und undetected. And that's what was called uh, VBA stomping. So this technique was uh, reported years ago by uh, Dr. Veselin Bonchev. And he, he released a tool called uh, P-Code Dump that uh, can um, um, extract and disassemble the P-Code. Um, the, the technique was first demonstrated at uh, DerbyCon by, by uh, Kirk Seyri. 
uh, and they developed some uh, tools to show it. But uh, it's only this year, in 2019, that um, um, Stan Hecht uh, released Evil Clippy, which uh, made it very, very easy to, uh, to do. Um, so it will, um, with this tool, you can replace the VBA source code by what you want. And uh, it even provides a, a web server so that uh, it can uh, deliver the, the Pico that matches exactly your Microsoft Office version uh, based on the, the one you're running. So what Evil Clippy does is that it will uh, replace the, um, the source code by um, another source code while uh, leaving the, the P code intact. So let's do uh, yeah, a quick demo. OK. So here I have um, a macro called the VBA shellcode calc. So it's the same as the one we've seen before. So if I run only VBA on it, uh, you will uh, see the, the code of the, the macro that uh, runs the shellcode. OK. So now I'm going to uh, do VBA stomping on it with Evil Clippy. So for that, I will uh, replace the VBA source code by a uh, uh, code of, uh, that, is, uh, that looks innocuous. So um, I will show you the file, no code that VBA that I will use. So it's just a macro with uh, one command, so it does nothing. And I will use Evil Clippy to replace the code by this one. OK, so now we have um, a new file called uh, VBA shellcode evilclippy.doc. So if I analyze it with an old version of my uh, tool, you see that uh, it's, uh, it's see it doesn't see the macro anymore. OK? But what happens if I run it? So here, there's still a macro. And if I run it, it, uh, it works. So obviously, Microsoft Office has uh, run the, the P code uh, that was uh, containing the shell code, and not the, the VBA source code that I uh, replaced by something that uh, looks uh, benign. So it's a very effective technique to uh, hide uh, malicious code. OK. So what I have uh, developed uh, recently, and in fact, um, so I developed uh, the uh, technique this year, and I released uh, the new version uh, last night. So it's uh, brand new. Um, so this, um, so OLE VBA now will actually use uh, pcode dump to disassemble the pcode. It will extract all the relevant keywords, uh, like uh, function names, uh, variable names, etc. And it will compare uh, those names with uh, the VBA source code. And if it doesn't find the same keywords, then it's a good sign that uh, the, the file may have been uh, stomped. Um, yes. And here, uh, it's not so easy, because um, the, the tricky part is to extract the right keywords, because the P code and VBA source code are, source code are, are quite different. So I'll show you. Now, if I run the latest or VBA on the file, so you see here, maybe there is a, a new alert saying a VBA stomping uh, was detected. And here, instead of the, the VBA source code that we had before, we see the, the P code that has been de uh, decompiled, disassembled. OK, so now at least. Uh, we can detect uh, such a technique and uh, still analyze uh, the code. OK. Uh, second technique uh, that uh, I wanted to show is uh, Excel for macros. It's another type of macros that only runs in Excel. It's uh, an older engine than VBA. It dates uh, back to 93, I think. Uh, it's a completely different syntax and different engine. 
but it has very similar features uh, and risk as a VBA. So with Excel for macros, you can do the same. You can call uh, DLLs, you can uh, run executable files, etc. Um, so it can be present in Excel files, but also in uh, another old format called uh, Silk, which is a text file for, uh, to, ex to exchange data between uh, spreadsheets. Uh, the main difference is that when you open a Silk file in Excel, uh, it's not covered by the protected view. So you, instead, uh, you don't get uh, the yellow bar with enable editing. You directly get the uh, enable content uh, button. Um, so what I did uh, this year, uh, so Didier Stevens, um, we, in his tool, uh, OLE Dump, developed an XLM parser uh, for Excel for macros, and I integrated it into OLE VBA. So it's now the also uh, covered. And uh, since, uh, and uh, in fact, uh, yesterday, I also developed a Silk uh, format parser. So now OLVBA can uh, handle both uh, formats. So that's uh, brand new. Uh, no. OK, so this is an example of a Silk file with a shell code. So again, a shell code that will run uh, calc.exe. Uh, so here we can see that uh, it can call uh, DLL files, so kernel32, uh, write process memory, create thread, and then uh, here we have the, the shell code uh, encoded uh, with uh, these uh, functions. And uh, so with the versions that I released yesterday of uh, OLVBA, this is uh, what you get in the output. Now you, you see the code, and uh, it will also identify the different uh, suspicious keywords. So a quick demo. So here is the, the silk file. If I open it in Excel, Excel shows up on the wrong screen. OK, here we see nothing. Uh, we don't see the code. If I click Enable Content, Yes, calc. So you see the shellcode has uh, run, and Excel has uh, crashed also. <laughs> OK, so now, how does it look with OLVBA? OK. So OLVBA will pass the silk file, find if there are uh, actual macros, and uh, find out uh, the different uh, suspicious keywords that uh, need to be uh, analyzed. So now you are covered for silk files or so. OK, how long do I have? 10 minutes? Yes. OK. So. Uh, a few words about detection and prevention. OK, so, so far we have seen the analysis side of things. Uh, but uh, usually, it's when you already know it's malicious. Now, how to detect if something is malicious first? What if we could detect all these malicious macros and block them before they uh, end up uh, uh, in the end user uh, inbox? In fact, uh, antivirus engines are, uh, are fine for many um, uh, malware detection, but uh, for macros, uh, it's really not enough. Because there are too many new macros every day. It's too easy to create new macros, to change the code so, so that it looks different. And it's very difficult for antivirus uh, companies to uh, keep up with that. Uh, when you have um, yeah, thousands of new samples every day, it's uh, almost impossible to have signatures. Uh, and when you develop a signature to uh, detect a uh, malicious macro, by the time it takes a few hours so that uh, your uh, customers get the signature, and by that time, the attackers have already switched on to a new macro. So it's a constant uh, cat and mouse uh, game, and uh, antivirus engines are not uh, enough to, uh, to do that. Um, and uh, there are so many samples of uh, malicious macros that if you take um, some uh, malicious samples uh, several months old and run into an uh, antivirus engine. Many of them are not detected, uh, so it's really not working. So 
I uh, try to think, okay, how could we develop, uh, how can we detect uh, malicious macros? In fact, there are a few simple observations. First, malicious macros need to start automatically. Uh, if they don't start, um, it's not malware. So we need to have uh, keywords like document open, document close, auto open in a, in a macro. Second, they need to do something to the system. They need to uh, drop a payload as a file, or they need to inject code into another process. And finally, they need to do something to execute that payload. Uh, luckily for us, most of those actions cannot be obfuscated in VBA. Those are uh, VBA keywords that cannot be obfuscated. Um, and if you look at uh, most of the normal legitimate macros, they do not need to use th those features. So if we know the right keywords, it's possible to detect uh, malicious macros using uh, a small number of them. So that's uh, how I developed um, this tool uh, called Macro Raptor. Um, so first, I identify if there are automatic triggers. Then I identify keywords uh, that are related to any write operation uh, on the system. And then if there is any keyword that uh, looks like an execution operation. And um, the algorithm is that uh, if there is automatic trigger and either write or execute, then it's uh, classified as suspicious. Uh, in practice, I tested Microraptor on uh, all the samples I have, and um, I mean, all of them so far have been detected, and it worked even from the 99 microvirus like Melissa uh, to the latest Emotet uh, that I uh, downloaded this morning. Um, the thing is, that algorithm is very simple. It's really focused on detection. Uh, there will be false positives because you can have legitimate macros that uh, run automatically and that uh, try to write something to disk or to use a create object uh, function call, for example. But at least it will detect uh, most uh, malicious macros and block a few legitimate ones. So, quick demo. So here I have uh, oops, a number of files in that uh, directory, and I will run my just mraptor on all of them. So you see, unlike um, Viper Monkey, it's very, very fast because it's just checking for uh, a few uh, specific keywords. And you see here we have uh, the code of uh, Melissa from 99, and we have uh, a fresh sample uh, from Emotet uh, from this morning. Um, uh, and a few other ones that are uh, quite recent, and all of them have been uh, flagged as suspicious. On the contrary, I have a legitimate macros here, uh, a document without macros, and those ones are not uh, flagged as suspicious. So very, very simple, very fast. Um, also, uh, for example, here, that's a recent example I, I've seen, uh, so which was... Uh, yeah, a few days ago on uh, Virus Total, uh, this macro, which is uh, obviously malicious when you look at the code, uh, was not detected by most uh, antivirus engines on Virus Total, uh, and yet, I mean, uh, it's uh, directly flagged uh, suspicious by Macroraptor. Okay, Macroraptor is nice, but uh, wh what we need is uh, to go further. We need to um, implement it to block macros before they hit end users. So um, I have developed. Uh, a Milter script that can be integrated with a sendmail, sendmail and postfix into an email server. Uh, it will detect malicious macros in email attachments and uh, remove them automatically. Um, and a similar filter could also be developed for web proxies. So it's a, it's a demonstration. It's not production grade, but at least it shows that uh, we could uh, easily capture um, um, block macros in emails before they reach end users without relying on antivirus engines. Um, there are other uh, detection solutions, uh, and uh, you can also use uh, Microsoft GPOs if you want to block all macros coming from the internet to have uh, an additional layer of uh, protection. Uh, a quick word about Application Guard. Um, Microsoft recently announced that uh, they will uh, uh, change the way uh, Microsoft Office uh, uh, opens documents, they will replace the protected view 
by uh, Application Guard, which in fact will run Microsoft Office in a container. Uh, thank you. In a container um, before, uh, I mean, if it comes from the internet. Uh, so that's very nice. Uh, it will be available in mid 2020. From my understanding, it will not be uh, deployed automatically on all of its versions. Um, the thing is, apparently, in the container, when you open the file, it will let macros run directly without enable content button. So we have to see if uh, the container is uh, secure enough to contain the macros, because they will run. Uh, OK, in fact, the, the main issue with VBA macros is that uh, the, the VBA engine and the API is way, way too powerful. It can do anything on your system. So I think the, the only way uh, to tackle this issue, uh, because we cannot um, block all macros. I mean, many people need macros to do their job. So uh, a way to do that would be to uh, look at the API and separate what are the safe features, what are the unsafe features. For example, calling a DLL on the system uh, is really a high security risk. And it's normally not used uh, by most legitimate macros. So we could identify those uh, unsafe features and um, um, uh, disable them for uh, uh, normal end users and only allow them if you really know what you're doing or if the macro is digitally signed or something like that, uh, so that um, end users could use macros with safe features easily without risk. And um, uh, unsafe features would be only uh, allowed uh, with an additional uh, layer of security. In fact, it's uh, the same model that has been uh, implemented in uh, Adobe Reader um, for their JavaScript API. If you look at uh, Adobe Reader, the JavaScript API uh, allows you to do many things in the PDF document, but it's not allowed to touch the, the system. It cannot touch files, it cannot touch other processes. So it's quite safe. And nowadays, there are very few um, uh, security issues in PDF. There used to be a few years ago, but not now in uh, 2019, PDF is uh, much safer than it used to be. Um, and I think Microsoft Office could follow the same approach uh, for VBA to, uh, to save and um, to, um, <coughs> to uh, add, sorry, to uh, fix this issue we have with the VBA macros uh, for 19 years, uh, more than 19 years now. Okay, future work. Uh, so, OL Tools is a, an open source uh, project, and we have many. Uh, um, ideas and many things to, uh, to improve uh, with uh, contributors. Uh, first, um, we have developed a number of uh, small tools. Now uh, it would be time to have a, a single scanning tool that would uh, scan for everything, not just macros. Um, also, Viper Monkey, uh, we need to improve the parser to make it faster, etc., and to migrate to Python 3. And that's uh, not an easy task. Um, Quickly, I would like to thank uh, all the open source contributors, because I'm not uh, the only one working on this project. Um, so many people have uh, contributed uh, very uh, useful parts of uh, these tools. So it's, um, open source is really a great way to develop uh, such, uh, such tools. OK, quick summary of the takeaways. So first, yes, when an end user clicks enable content, it's exactly as dangerous as running an unknown executable file. So it's a really a security issue. Uh, VBA macros are old, but they are still used a lot to deliver malware those days, and simply because it works. Uh, and there are more and more obfuscation, so it's hard for analysts uh, to uh, find out what they do. But uh, we are improving at analysis tools, um, and uh, it's great to have open source collaborators uh, to, uh, to do that. And uh, maybe uh, an area that needs to be improved is to filter macros before they reach uh, end users using uh, email gateways and uh, web proxies. OK, that's it for my presentation. Thank you. So uh, we have a few minutes for questions. No questions? Yes? Right. 
so uh, earlier you were saying that it's possible to uh, basically have code within other parts of the document, like cells or part of the documents, uh, like other variables. So what if the P code make reference to these cells, uh, and then uh, basically would would the uh, would sorry would uh, would you be able to detect uh, say VBS stomping because essentially the P code it's basically making calls to these these uh, cells. Yeah. So e essentially the P code doesn't contain any malicious functions? No, um, in fact, the, um, the code itself must be in the VBA module. It cannot be in the document or in the forms or extra. In fact, what you have in the document or in the forms uh, or in the document variables are um, strings strings that uh, can be extracted by the VBA code and then uh, deobfuscated. That's um, where they uh, hide, for example, if they need to uh, connect to a URL to, uh, to download a payload, uh, they will take that URL, then they will obfuscate it with um, different uh, functions, and then store that text into the document text in the document body uh, with a small font or in a white character so that you don't see it. Uh, and the, the VBA code, will uh, find that um, data and then uh, unpack it to, uh, to use it. But it's not actual code in the document. Uh, the code is always in the VBA module. So, um, so then it means that um, whatever, when, when you do VBA stomping, you will only hide the code, not the, um, the hidden data in the rest of the document. Yes, here. Thank you. For the slide on encryption, you mentioned this Velvet Sweatshop hidden feature of Excel. Yes. Did Microsoft disclose what is the story behind that? Uh, to be honest, I don't know. Um, I think it's very old. It has been there for uh, ages. Uh, I don't know exactly where it comes from. Uh, but I, I think, uh, yeah, it's, um, you have this in other um, uh, software. For example, in Adobe Reader, you can encrypt a PDF with an empty password, and then it will open transparently on, on the user uh, without need to, uh, to type an empty password. So we have the same in other software. Thank you. Thank you for the lovely presentation. I have a question. Uh, if there is maliciously written VBA in one of the documents, can another document having a different uh, VBA uh, or a macro fire the previous one? Can two documents be linked? Um, you mean the like VBA code? Uh, that's a good question. Um, well. If both macros are running, you mean? Two documents with uh, two macros running at the same time? Yes. Yeah. OK. Well, yes, of course, because uh, these two macros are uh, actually processed on the system. So they can use anything on the system to communicate uh, together. They can use uh, files. They can use uh, DLLs to communicate uh, through the memory or the network. So the question is that uh, the malicious code can actually reside in one, but not be triggered by the same. Uh, uh, same document, right? Um, oh, so you mean one document triggers another one? Uh, well, in fact, in any document, anyway, if you want to run code, you, you need to click Enable Content. So <laughs> the user would have to open both documents and click Enable Content on both. Otherwise, uh, the, the code will not run on the second one. So it's, uh, it's not automatic, I mean. No, uh, I, why I ask this question is like your tool can extract the VBA. Yes. And uh, so that that kind of thing can be done by the other document, right? If it is enabled, and then in that case, it will not be showing as a malicious VBA. Well, so the, the thing is that when you run uh, the, the VBA code, cannot um, modify itself or modify another VBA uh, document. 
there is a, a security uh, parameter in Office that uh, prevents that. In fact, uh, that, that was a big issue uh, back in the 90s uh, with the microvirus. They were automatically uh, changing themselves and uh, they were infecting other documents. And uh, that is not possible anymore uh, uh, nowadays. Microsoft Office blocks uh, VBA code can do anything on the system except modify itself. So it cannot um, modify the VBA code in another document um, directly. It's not uh, possible. Yes, maybe last question? Out of time. OK, so we, we can discuss uh, after the, it's finished. Yes, thank you.